Welcome to today's career chat. Today's topic is business owners. We want to thank everyone for stopping by and watching and attending today. We have Joan and Alex with us today who are business owners in the York area. I'm going to pass it off to you um, to kind of introduce yourselves and what you do and wh where you do your thing. Alex, do you want to go first? Uh oh, Alex, you're muted. <laughs> okay, sorry. No worries, it happens to the best of us. Okay. So my name is Alex and I own my girlfriend's wardrobe in downtown York. Um, my shop is actually right next to Jones and I have a women's consignment store. Excellent. Joan, tell me a little about you. So Alex is right. My shop is right next to hers. We're at 36 and 38 North Beaver Street and I have a yarn shop. We sell yarn and tools for knitters and crocheters. Excellent. What, um, I guess let's start with a little bit. What are your backgrounds? Did you start out wanting to own a business? What, if, where, what brought you to this? So I actually wanted to be a lawyer. And then I realized that you had to go to school for much longer. <laughs> so <laughs> I decided uh, to go to school for graphic design. So I have a bachelor's degree in computer and information sciences. Excellent. And Joan? And I actually am the opposite from Alex. Um, I came to this pretty late in life. I have a master's degree in biochemistry and did lab work and actually continue to. So this is sort of my side gig. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I sort of grew out of my hobby more than anything else. Excellent. So we, when you think about like what inspired you to do this, what, what brought the choice around what do you think that um, the cho what prompted you to make that choice, Joan, to start a business? Oh, so for me, it was really all about the fun. I love all things that have to do with yarn, and it seemed like a pretty natural extension to own my own shop. Sounds good. Increase your collection. Yeah, and <laughs> share and share the fun with other people. Yeah. How about you, Alex? So I actually started my business while I was in college. I was a sophomore in college when everything started. Um, and it kind of came out of a few different things. One was necessity. You know, one was wanting to get out of the job that I was currently in. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as the necessity, I needed an internship to graduate. And I could not find an internship that was willing to work with both my school schedule and my retail job schedule that I was in at the time, I was working about 30 hours a week, plus going to school full time. So, so you're busy. Yeah. Finding an internship that was going to work with all of that was not, it was not happening. So I uh, went to my advisor and talked to my mom and we started the store. Excellent. Well, and that kind of leads me to the next question is what... Who did you get help from? Who were your mentors? Who did you learn? Since neither of you really had a background in business or entrepreneurship, where did you learn how to do this? Alex, because you had mentioned your mom. Yep. So my mom definitely helped as far as inventory to start. And she was really my sounding board. But I did a lot of Googling, which this was almost 10 years ago now. So I feel like Googling was a little bit more reliable <laughs> as far as the information that you would find. Mm -hmm. So I did a lot of Googling and I talked to my college advisors. Um, and I also met with a SCORE mentor and I had them help me fill out my PA 100, all of the forms that I needed to file with the state and federally and made sure that they were going to be um, filled out correctly before I submitted them. Excellent. Joan? So I had always helped out at friends yarn shops, whether it was up here in Pennsylvania or when we lived down in Virginia. And um, I did not go through SCORE. In retrospect, I probably should have. But I do periodically touch base with a couple of the business faculty here at York College. So it helps having those connections, having that networking. It definitely does. Yeah. Cause there yeah. are all sorts of things you're just not going to know how to do on your own. 
Yeah. Joan, could you explain what SCORE is? So um, I don't know that it's actually unique to York, but it is a, a um, program run by, I think, the Small Business Association that just helps people who are want to own a business build a business plan, look for funding if that's what you need. It sets you up with all the tools you need to start a business. So if the, if the people watching aren't from the York area, there's probably something similar where they are that help or assist yeah. people and who I, want to do a small business. I think it's possible that SCORE is a bigger program than just the York area. Alex, okay. do you know? I'm almost positive it is. Yeah, I am, okay. I am too. Okay, so that'd be something that people could look into. Yeah. Um, what... What... Okay, so this is a two-part question. What was your biggest excitement starting your business and your biggest fear? Alex, do you want to take that? Yep. So at the, be at the beginning of start, like when you first started, not necessarily right now, because it's all different now. Yeah. So first starting, biggest excitement was starting something from scratch and mm -hmm. actually launching the website and getting my first sale from a customer that I had no idea who they were. <laughs> wasn't uh, a family or friend wasn't a family or friend I still to this day have no idea how she found me online because I started the business online only so it was literally some stranger blindly trusting that I was not some scammer that was just going to take her money right so that was my bi biggest excitement um, my biggest fear was it not working yeah yeah that's a pretty big fear yeah <laughs> Yep. Joe. Yeah. So for us, I mean, the whole process was pretty exciting. It was exciting looking for a spot and finding that perfect location. Unlike Alex, we started as brick and mortar and that's really all we are now. Mm -hmm. um, so there wasn't, there was, there was a lot of stress to find a place, but it was really exciting to hit on the right place. And then to, you know, talk with the different vendors and select an inventory. And of course, I think when you're running your own business, the only fear is have I made a terrible mistake and am I going to fail? Yeah. <laughs> I mean that, so what yeah. what did you guys do to kind of overcome that fear? Because I mean, sometimes that's enough fear to stop someone from starting the business, from taking that next step. What did you do to kind of be willing to take that chance? So I, uh, one of the managers that I worked with at the time actually told me that I wouldn't get anywhere with my business. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, she was similar in age. She was another part-time manager and that really motivated me to prove her wrong. Mm -hmm. So I was determined to make her You're stubborn. Like, yeah. I yeah. was determined to make her look like the big meanie she was being. <laughs> No, that's good because that's it's being and, and stubborn always has this really kind of negative yeah. negativity behind it. But it's good to be stubborn. It's good to be persistent and willing to do that. Yeah. Joan, any So for us, I think that the if you're starting a new business, the best thing you can do is be realistic about what you have to spend mm -hmm. and sticking in your budget. Mm -hmm set a budget and stick to it. Don't get into debt mm -hmm. and, um, and be flexible. You know, we started our space with a much smaller inventory than we have now and have grown it over the last three and a half years. Um, the other thing, and it's hard for me to remember this is you can look at sales goals and you can look at where you were at last year or the year before, but you really need to be careful about getting too concerned of daily totals and weekly totals and even monthly totals you need to focus more on quarterly so like Don't big picture bogged down in how you did last thursday versus this thursday or last mm. year on a thursday okay that makes sense and be so patient. um kind of bringing this back around to the girls who are um usually middle school high school that are that attend this What's something that they could do now if they're thinking, hey, I have this idea or I want to try this or what are things that they can do while they're still in high school that would help them succeed at being a business owner? Get a part-time job. Yes. 
in whatever the field is you're looking at. Yep. Yeah. And find somebody who is willing to be your mentor mm -hmm. that um, you can ask questions to. Some business owners are going to be, they're not going to want to share a lot of information mm -hmm. um, because they don't want you to start a business that's going to directly compete with them. So you have to find the right person who's willing to be realistic and also, you know, helpful at the same time. Because mm -hmm. they can be realistic and kind of Debbie Downers, um, you know, but you want somebody who's realistic, but also encouraging. Where would they, where could they find someone like that? Like, do they just like go cold into a store and say, or maybe like uh, to a, a school or a business association? I think it depends on their age. Um, okay. If you're younger, I think you should talk to your parents. I think you should maybe talk to some of your parents' friends, some of your teachers. You know, um, if there's a guidance counselor at school that you really connect with, see if they can help you get something set up. Um, and don't be afraid to do an, an internship that's unpaid mm -hmm. because sometimes that experience is worth, you know, all the time that you spend. I think if you're in high school, getting a part-time job there, like Joan said, is a really great yeah. idea. Also being a customer, you know, and stopping it often, following them on social media, you know, engaging with their business. I'm always more inclined to answer questions and also make donations to, um, you know, schools where the parent shops with me and the parents coming to me and asking for me to donate you know, or buy an ad in their cheerleaders book mm -hmm. or the basketball program. Um, so I think supporting the business owner that you maybe want to mentor with is really step one and making that connection that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other thing, if you're really thinking like you want a retail business, I don't think you can replace retail experience, even if it's not mm -hmm. retail with where you want to be, because quite frankly, you may not like it as much as you think you will. Yeah. <laughs> Retail is a lot yeah. of work. Yes. And I'm not sure that it's for everybody. It's I say, how many days off do you guys get? What does your work schedule look like? I get one day off. A week. Yeah. I, because I have a full-time job on top of the shop, I get no days off. Yeah. So it's a lot of work. It is. And so you it's really kind of have, you need to have that passion behind it and that love of it. Yeah. It love needs to be totally worth it. Yeah. yeah, and I work over 50 hours a week just in my shop. That doesn't yeah. count, you know, time all, like outside of the store. You know, today I left a little bit earlier, but I had to go run errands for the business. I had to go pick mm -hmm. up backdrops, and I picked up flowers for Joan and I to plant outside and make our shops look nice. And then I spent time doing, you know, Instagram stuff and all of that. So even though I'm not in the store, I'm still working. Right. Well, and that brings up a good point because you are a small business. So you wear a lot of hats. You're the owner, you're the manager, you're the kind of the accountant because you got to deal with the budget. You're the marketing person. Um, I know both of you have employees. Um, what, tell me about that experience. <laughs> Like what, what, what were you at the point when you started that you could have employees or was it something that you grew into? So for me, I had an employee. So after having my online store for a year and a half, I expanded to a brick and mortar. So I was still in college. Mm -hmm. And so as the fall season started to come and I was starting to go back to class, I actually had the girl that was shadowing slash interning for me from high school for her high school senior project. I actually hired her to work the days that I still had school. So for me, I had to hire somebody right off the bat and mm -hmm. she's still with me today. Um, she's worked for me now. I've had the storefront for over seven years and she just got promoted to full-time. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So all, all that time she spent, you know, shadowing me and interning for free for her high school senior project. It's been a job for seven years. Right. So it was a good investment for her, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah and I've only ever had one employee. Um, she's perfect. So there's not, <laughs> you know, she really is. Um, so I have very little experience with employees, really. Yeah. But how so has far, it been, how has it been managing people? Is that... Is that a skill you had to learn or is that something that's kind of that you learned 
since becoming a business owner or was it a skill that kind of transitioned from other jobs that you had? It definitely transitioned from other jobs for me. Yeah. Yeah. And um, same thing with me, one of the things that I will say, working retail, getting a job in the field you want to go into, you really get to learn what makes a good manager and what makes a bad manager, mm -hmm. what makes good company policies, what makes bad company policies, um, you know, and so I think of that every time I have a situation with my employee, you know, is how would this have been handled at one of the other big corporations I worked at? Right. And how do I want to handle it now? Like what were their policies then? What are my policies now? And, you know, there are definitely things where I try to put my employees first and I make sure that they're happy because if they're happy, they're going to do a good job. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things I learned where some of these corporations and some of these girls will learn this as they start to get jobs or even in their jobs now is sometimes it's really all about the numbers or somebody filling a certain time slot. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's not every place though. Joan, anything you want to add? No, like I said, I've really only had one employee and we haven't had a lot of problems. Um, I think you want to look for employees that you can be upfront and honest with. Mm -hmm. I would rather be told there's an issue and work through it than and try to have to try to guess what somebody's going through. Right. Um, yeah, you know, kind, caring and honest is the way to go on both sides. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that leads to the good communication. Yeah. Which you need in any relationship that you have. Yeah. 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 We have a question from Lila, 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 I totally, I'm sorry. She asks, how has COVID-19 changed your business? Oh, oh. That's, that's, <laughs> that's a question that is. You better make sure you're comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> or comfortable, Lila, sorry, Lila. Um, wow, it's changed. So a lot of my business is people coming in and spending a kind of a sizable amount of time. We have mm -hmm. furniture set up like a living room and they come and they stay and they work on their projects and that doesn't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. I know in both of our cases, we've had to reduce the number of clients we can have at a time. Mm -hmm. You have to wear a mask, we have hand sanitizer, we clean things. Um, yeah, we have sneeze guards up. <laughs> It's been a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you had any, um, have you received support from the community or from the government in assisting with this because you are a small business? So um, my business. If it's too personal of a question, tell no, me. No, and... No. My business took out one of those little payroll loans mm -hmm. to let me continue to pay my employee. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And we have had a pretty fantastic response from our customers. They've come in and you can tell when they're coming in just to throw you some support. They call <laughs> and they buy gift certificates. They've really been wonderful. Yeah. And very understanding. Yep. Um, I was also able to get the Paycheck Protection Program loan, which um, is through the government. Um, it is a little bit of a mess. <laughs> yes. Um, so, and I didn't get mine until almost five weeks into being shut down. Ooh. So I was actually paying my employees for almost five weeks out of my own pocket, out of my mm -hmm. business savings. Um, and which was great. And then I was able to use this, but, um, it's definitely been a little bit of a mess as far as dealing with that on the back end of things just because the SBA keeps changing a lot of things. And so you can't even apply to have that loan forgiven if you've used it correctly. Not because, yet. Right. Because the banks aren't taking any of the applications because things keep changing. Right. So, um, which I'm still grateful for it, but at the same time. Yeah. I mean, we both continued to pay our employees even though they couldn't work the regular schedules. Yes. Right. And that goes back to how do you want to treat your employees? Yeah. You know, 
all that good stuff. Um, and then my customers have been great. So I was actually doing Facebook live sales during the shutdown. Excellent. I was still working, you know, really six days a week. I was in the store Monday through Friday and I did six Facebook live sales a week. So I ended up doing over 54, I think, live sales. Wow. So I was still able to bring money in and my customers were great. They were shopping online. I was, you know, I was dropping off if they lived within a certain radius from the store. And then once we were able to reopen, it has been really phenomenal. So we have really great customers. We've been really busy. So I'm just really thankful for all of that. That's great. Well, and that kind of leads to the next question. Like how has technology changed the small business? Like, so if you think of the technology we have now versus technology, five, 10, 15, 20 years ago, has that changed the, kind of the essential of the business? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. When I first started my store, I don't know that Instagram was around or it was just coming out. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Facebook didn't have ads. So mm -hmm. there was no advertising on Facebook. Um, email list, you know, we're still kind of a really big thing. And now we have the ability to go live on Facebook and live on Instagram and people can shop with us, you know, similar to the home shopping network. And mm -hmm. we have our website and, you know, just, we have Instagram, which is really huge now and Snapchat and all of these other different things. So all of these technologies have given us a really new way to connect with all of our customers on a 24 seven basis, which is a, both a good and bad thing because we get messages at one o'clock in the morning and I don't know, I don't, not everybody expects a response right away, but some people do. Ugh. Turn your phone on, on do not disturb. Set that up. <laughs> Absolutely. So probably not as much for us as for Alex. We don't do online sales yet. Um, we talk about it, but we haven't pulled the trigger on that. It's a little bit different with yarn. Mm hmm Because it's harder for, you know, for people to see exactly what the color is and what you have. Well, it's very um, tactile too. It is. And, and clothes are too, but yeah. Yeah. Um, but we definitely work the email list. We run ads on Facebook. We mm -hmm. try to stay up with Instagram. But um, for us, it really, it, Ravelry, I think, has changed the way mm -hmm. businesses make. It's that online community where people find patterns and talk to each other and mm -hmm. where you hope to build a good reputation. Right. Well, and I think in both of your businesses, trends play a big part yeah. within fashion trends and within yarn trends. Um, like whether, what, what projects are people working on? What do people want to make? What kind of yarn are people liking right now? So how do you stay on top of the trends, Joan? So it helps that we have representatives from the different yarn companies who come in and they show us what's going to be new. And a good rep will show you everything. A bad rep will try to, you know, push you where they want you to go. Um, definitely the online communities help. And there are magazines for knitters and crocheters that we stay current with so we know what's coming up. It is kind of a constant challenge, though. But also you learn a lot from your customers who will come in and say, hey, did you see this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have to pay attention. Yeah. And Alex, yours is a consignment store. So how do you make sure that you are getting things that people are going to want to buy? So I do the same thing Joan does as far as the magazines. Mm -hmm. I follow a lot of fashion blogs as well. I'm on Pinterest, you know, every week checking in. And then I will actually send an email to my consigners and say, you know, hey, this is, this is what customers are going to be looking for, or this is what they already are looking for. And so I just do my best to encourage people to bring those items into me. So sometimes I have to go to certain consigners and say, I know you have this, mm -hmm. you know, like, <laughs> please bring it to me. <laughs> Very. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what misconceptions are there out there about small business owners and what would you like to say to clear those misconceptions up? Wow. 
I know. I, there's one automatically that comes to me. Um, a lot of people think there's two actually. You start a business and you make a lot of money right away. Yeah. And it does work. It does happen for some people, mm -hmm. um, but it does not always happen that way. So, you know, a lot of business owners don't pay themselves anything for up to the first three or four years. <laughs> yep. John's um, volunteering. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it all, it's all going to depend on circumstances a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, and all of that, but they, a good rule of thumb is to not expect to take home a paycheck for the first three to four years. Um, I was, I was lucky. Uh, you know, when I started my business, I still lived at home with my mom. So my, my car, my bills were my car payment and my cell phone. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, when I went full time with my business, I added up all my bills together. I added up what I was currently making at my retail job. And that's what I wanted to pay myself every month. Did it happen every month consistently? No, not for a long time. Um, I, it probably started being consistent with the second year of my storefront being open. So the third year I was in business, okay. I started consistently paying myself every month. Um, the second biggest thing is uh, you, you start your website, you sign a lease and open your storefront and people are just going to magically roll in and buy from you. It takes a lot of work to build your customer base and to, you have to continuously be building and nurturing yeah. those relationships with your customers. So it's not a build it and they will come type of scenario. It's build it, work your butt off, advertise, 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 and then they show up someday. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so for me, it's not really, it's not really a misconception so much as it's a guiding principle that I don't think I realized is you have to be on game every day you're open. When you open the front door and welcome customers in, it no longer matters what's going on in your life. Mm -hmm. Good, bad, or otherwise, it, it does not matter anymore. What matters is that you make them comfortable and feel like what's going on in their lives is okay, regardless of your own. That yeah. sounds exhausting. It is. There are days that I go home and say I have done way too, maybe too much peopling today. <laughs> and to piggyback on that, you know, if you are going to open a brick and mortar business and you decide that you're going to be open Monday through Friday, 10 to five, you better be open Monday through Friday, 10 to five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are only so many times somebody is going to pull on a locked door. Yeah. They go somewhere else and they're going to go to your competition. They're going to go yep. online and you know, you need to make sure you have the hours your customers want to shop with you too. But you also have to be firm once you've set the hours. I don't know how many times a month people will show up on Wednesdays, the one day of the week, the week we're closed and ask Alex why the yarn shop isn't open. We've never been open on Wednesdays. Yeah. And I don't feel bad yeah. about it because our published hours. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But yeah, you need to be there when your customers expect you to be yep. there. You know, obviously there are going to be some, you know, some circumstances where maybe you can't be there and they, they better be extreme. Yeah. You no. Know, and you uh, better have left a note. Yeah. And you better be posting on your social media, everything. You better call somebody that has a business near you to go leave a note on your door, something. Yeah. You know, there's a business that just opened on our block, literally just opened Friday. Their business hours are Tuesday through Saturday. Guess who wasn't open yesterday and guess who wasn't open today? No. Yeah. They literally just opened. Oh, yeah, so, that's not setting a good precedent because people are going to want to come when they find out you're, it's new and it's, I mean, you want to jump on that. Yeah. So it's also frustrating to the other businesses on the street because guess who hears the complaints? Mm. That, but we all drive people to our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And so we, it, whether we're planning on helping each other or not, we do. Right. Because you come downtown for one thing and you say, hey, look. Yep. There's a yarn shop. So, yeah. Yeah. The other thing that I didn't know until I started a business is the best promotion you can run to sell more stuff is to be open more. 
Mm. Yeah. It's better than any special, you know, it's better than any sale. It's better than anything is to actually be open more. Yeah. Yeah. Cause people can't buy things if you're not open. Yes. I mean, if you have an online store, technically, yes, yes. but yeah. You, you know, you need to make the time to put stuff on the website yep. and mm -hmm. advertise that, you know, but you also need, again, need to be open when your customers want to shop. Yeah. Because yeah. your customers that live three miles from you are probably not going to want to pay for shipping. No. So. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Um, so just kind of get to give the girls uh, more of an idea of what your typical day is. <laughs> So let's say it is the perfectly planned day and everything is going to go the way you want it to go. How does your day go? You want me to go first, Alex? So <laughs> if I'm having a perfect day, I am there 20 minutes before we open. Mm -hmm. Go me. Um, <laughs> and we have a steady stream of customers all day. So we're open on Saturday from 10 to 5. And so, yeah, a perfect day is a day that's full of customers from 10 to 5. Like, what kind of stuff do you do during the day? Um, so, it depends. I sometimes, like this past Monday when I ran the shop, I both helped customers pick out stuff for projects. I had two customers come in with problems with projects that I helped them through. Mm -hmm. um, what else did we do? We had, I think we had a phone order. Yeah. We talked. We talked, yeah. Because we're right <laughs> Alex next came day. over and visited. <laughs> yeah, and I go there and visit. But yeah, I mean, with for us, it's it's all it's all customer base. Yeah. A perfect day is lots of customers. Mm -hmm. A not so perfect day, which was last Saturday, is when you can't get down Beaver Street because the street's blocked off and you can't get to your light or your parking lot because the electricity is still off. Oh no. <laughs> and then you come and yell at Alex about it. <laughs> after, you've, after you've thrown the kid out on the curb and said, open the door and put the sign out because <laughs> we're late. So there's a lot of variation in the days. There can be, yes. <laughs> Alex, what, what are some of the day-to-day activities uh, jobs tasks that you that you do so um i'm typically there about an hour and a half to two hours before i open um sorry <laughs> don't she's making it look bad but i have to get inventory out you know like i get new inventory every single day mm -hmm. so it's a little bit different from joan so the best part for me is to work on that inventory before I'm open, before customers are in the store, so I can get it out. So when they come in, they can buy the new stuff too. Right. So um, I usually spend the first two hours getting inventory ready to go out, catching up on paperwork, um, doing any Zoom calls, you know, that I need to, making any phone calls I need to. Um, and then I'll open at 10 and get everything ready to go. And you know, I'll have customers coming in. I have drop-offs, people bringing me their stuff for, to sell for them. I have them coming in doing that. Um, and while I'm helping customers and doing drop-offs, I still need to work on our social media. Mm -hmm. So for me, Instagram is really big. We post on our Instagram between our Instagram feed and our Instagram stories about 300 times a week. Yep. So whatever 300 divided by seven is, um, we yeah, can't. we don't do that. Many. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's that's what we um, I mean, I can pull up our Instagram. So my employee has been working, um, but I'm just looking at our Instagram right now and I'm going to try and show you, but I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but all those little dots at the top. Yeah. So they, they're very tiny dots, right? So those, those are that's all, all new pictures from today. So that's, Yes. And we try to post to our Instagram feed um, at 1130 every morning and then two hours after that up till we close. Um, so I have to do all the Instagram posts, which now I have Bethany full time. So she helps me out with those and we kind of, you know, take turns. Mm -hmm. um, and then I leave hopefully on time and come home. <laughs> so, I mean, I can be in the store most days and from eight to six. 
Now I'll do a fair amount of stuff at home. I'll update inventory in the computer system at home. Sometimes I even tag stuff at home and take it in. Dawn and I well, share the Facebook stuff, so. Yeah, so there's a lot of things that kind of go to and from and yeah, yeah, little bits here and there. What, oh, I don't know. How... Okay, I'm just gonna ask it. How do you feel about going to work every day? You mean like seven days a week? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little tired. But it's all right. I'm working yeah. towards the goal of being able to retire into the shop and I'm okay with it. Okay. So overall you're you enjoy your day. I do. Yeah. 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 And same here. I mean, yeah. if you would have asked me this question yesterday, um, it probably would be a slightly different answer. Yesterday was just a day. Okay. <laughs> just a day. Um but for the most part, I do really love going to work. You mm -hmm. know, even when I'm not working, you know, I will respond to messages on my phone, um, wherever, on my computer. Uh, my husband and I are looking at going somewhere just for two nights, just to kind of get away a little bit. And he said something, you know, about turning our phones off. And I said, well, I still need to have mine on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in case, you, you know, one of my girls needs me or a customer has right. a customer they don't know the answer to um you know stuff like that so i am kind of tied to my phone all the time but i enjoy it mm -hmm. like you know my husband is kind of counting down the years until he can retire which we have a very long time <laughs> and i'm over here going i don't know that i want to ever retire well, there you go you know so i mean it's definitely different when you love what you do mm -hmm. most days mm -hmm. like nine and a half out of ten yeah. What, um, if you could have your fairy godmother come and change one thing about being a business owner, what would you want your fairy godmother to do? Oh, yeah. I'd like a few more hours every day. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. To sleep? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> um... Oh, I'm pretty happy. How about you, Alex? Yeah, I mean, I don't really know. I mean, you, you always want more money. Yes. Well, you know, but that's, yeah. that goes, you want more customers and more sales. That's just the way it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know that there's really anything that I would want just magically changed for me. Looking back at how far I've grown my business from the, from day one, eight and a half years ago to today, it's a totally yeah. different business and I've really enjoyed learning not all the lessons um but most of the lessons some of the lessons just really sucked okay That's true. sometimes learning a lesson is painful it is <laughs> yes I mean I've learned a lot from it and I won't do it again I can tell you that um but I don't know that there's really anything that I would want to change you know because yeah. I'm the type of business owner I want to be in my business almost every day. You know, mm -hmm. I need one day where I'm not in the store, but I want to be in my business every day. I want to interact with my customers. I want my customers to see me. Mm -hmm. There are business owners who are okay with hiring a manager to run their business and be the mm -hmm. face of the business. And that's okay too. Um, but for me, that's just not what I want. So. Yeah. It wouldn't be what I would want either. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'm kind of happy with the way things are and the lessons personally yeah. cool um have there has there been any challenges or obstacles that you faced um being specifically a female business owner i could not i could not get funding to start my business originally we were going to open it we were going to buy a building um rent out the top floors of the apartment have the store in the bottom and we could not get financing to save, to save our lives. Um, mm -hmm. It also didn't help that I was like 18 at the time. Wow. Yeah. So you didn't have much credit going on right yeah. there. Well, I had good credit because I had my car payments and stuff like yeah. that. So like I had good credit. It's just nobody wanted to take me seriously. Mm. Nobody, you know, I remember there was one bank specifically and it's a local bank, but I won't name them. Um, every time I went back for something that they had asked me to bring and I brought it, it was something else. Mm. 
and something else like every single time. So I eventually just went with the online model and um, which surprisingly enough was something that my mom really pushed to do. And I remember telling her that nobody was going to buy clothing online. And remember, this is, this is almost 10 years ago, okay? Online shopping is not what it is today. Um, oh, don't you hate it when mom turns out to be right? Yeah, yeah, she was right. So, you know, we started out online and we, but the best lesson I learned from that is start with what you have. You know, Joan said earlier, don't go into debt. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I still don't to this day have any debt for my business. Oh, that's great. And I have very little personal debt. Um, you know, I have student loans from school. Uh, Everyone does. <laughs> that's a whole other topic. Girls, if you're going to college, just read the fine print. Make sure you fully understand. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> um, but, you know, I don't have bet business debt at all. And that's something that I'm really proud of because a lot of people mm -hmm. can't say that. I think Joan can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think my perspective is a little bit different because I started my business in my 50s. Mm -hmm. And so I don't feel like I've had any gender-based challenges, really. Have you had any age-based challenges? No. Okay. Have it's you had pretty, any challenges? It's a pretty, it's a pretty niche market. True. Um, we had trouble finding a place, but mm -hmm. it wasn't anything personal other than I was right. picky but um yeah you know it's actually it's been a relatively smooth path cool yeah excellent um what okay so I'm gonna do a call out to our attendees that if you have any other questions now is the time to to type them into the Q&A um, because my final question for the two of you is what advice, what words of advice, what whatever, would you give to the girls who want to start their, to be entrepreneurs, to start their own career, own job, own, bleh, own businesses? That's the word I'm looking for. Get some experience before you pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. Get yeah. a job in that field. Mm -hmm. Yep. Even if it's just part-time. Yep. Get something, start small. Yep. Start what you can. The way it looks in your head may not be what the reality is. Mm. Yes. Start small. Do yep. what you, work with what you can and grow your business as you can. Um, and re find somebody that you can mentor with or just talk to. There's all, there's so many Facebook groups for all different types of business owners. And they're a really great place to start. And you're gonna get lots of unfiltered, real, real advice. Sometimes it's not gonna be what you wanna hear. Sometimes it's gonna come off a little bit meaner, um, you know, than the person commenting may have intended or it may come off just as mean as they intended. Um, but I have found that not, just because somebody's comment comes off as mean, it doesn't always mean that they like want to be mean. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Or that their comments not valuable. Right. right. Yeah. Just They're because the message is packaged in an ugly way doesn't mean it's not important. Right. Yeah. And that I think is what I was trying to say. You know, I think like, that's actually part of it is you're going to have to be a little thick skinned. Yeah. Mm. And you know, sometimes those people that do have the ugly packaged messages are the people that they're just really passionate about whatever it is they're talking about and they don't want you to mess up yeah. mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. do something the wrong way and possibly get yourself in trouble down the road. So you have to remember that sometimes things that come off as mean is just somebody who really, really, really wants to help you. And so they think yelling is yelling at you right away is the best way to get that message across the first time. And I can actually say just based on experience, um, I think Alex and I really help each other out. Mm -hmm. You know, we definitely don't have the same businesses at all, but mm -hmm. find yourself a business buddy. It's nice to have somebody who's at least in the same ballpark who you can say, Hey, what am I going to do about this? And mm -hmm. Hey, have you ever done that? Even someone doesn't have to necessarily be a mentor. It can be a colleague. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
somebody that knows exactly what you're going through. Yeah. Because your friends, if they don't have businesses, they're not going to get it. Your boyfriends, girlfriends, husband, wife, they're not going to truly, truly understand the different challenges that you face day to day or all of the stuff you need to do. And there are a lot of times where your friends are going to say, well, can't you just close early? My kid says that almost every weekend. Oh, can't I we get, just get home early. No, no, yeah, we can't. My, mm. Some of my husband's friends every once in a while, he'll say, oh, we're going to be late. Alex is working till four. And they'll say, can't she just close early? And my husband has finally like had it gone to the point and said, you guys know who you're talking to. Yeah. Like, she's not going to close early. She can't close early. You got to be open when you say you're going to be open. Because if you never know, somebody could walk in at 358 when you close at four and spend $2,000. Mm-hmm. You never know. You never know. Yeah. Joan, did you have a final? No, hang in no. there. Be brave. Try to be kind. Yep. I like that. All right. Well, Alex and Joan, thank you so much for jumping on and talking to us about your experiences. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate it. Come on downtown and see us. Yeah. Thanks so much. You guys are awesome. Thank you. All right. Nicole, do you want to?